Welcome to our new video how to choose between screw retained and cement retained implant crowns. Here we discuss the four most important criteria that play a role in selecting the two types of processes in single and multiple implant restorations. First let us look at what these terms mean. A cement retained prosthesis is one in which an abutment is screwed onto the implant and a crown is cemented onto the abutment with any looting cement. So in such processes there are three component parts a fixture, an abutment and a cementable crown. In a screw retained prosthesis the abutment and crown is fabricated by the lab as a single piece structure. The crown together with the abutment is screwed directly onto the implant. Now let us discuss the selection of these two types based on four key criteria. Most important key factors are 1. The amount of restorative space available. 2. Retrievability which means if you want to retrieve the crown for some reason on due course. 3. Aesthetics and finally the parallelism of the implants in multiple implant cases. Of all these four factors the most striking is the amount of restorative space available for each case. So let us look into the restorative space in detail. Restorative space refers to mesiodistal and occluso gingival dimension of the edentulous space that will be occupied by your future crown. Here when we say restorative space we refer to the vertical component that is the occluso gingival dimension of the available space. The vertical component of the restorative space is very critical in prosthodontics because this one single factor decides the design and fate of the prosthesis, be it RPD, FPD, complete denture or implant. Let us look at how restorative space influence the cement type implant crown. The minimum apartment height required for a cemented crown to be retentive is 4 mm. The minimum space required for crown thickness is 1.5 to 2 mm depending on the material used. So the minimum vertical restorative space required to fabricate a cement retained crown is 4 plus 1.5 that means 5.5 mm. What this means is that if you want to do a cement retained implant crown, first ensure that the given case has 5.5 mm or greater vertical space. Anything less than 5.5 mm means it is inappropriate for a cement type restoration. So the first requirement for a cement retained implant crown is a vertical restorative space of 5.5 mm. Now let us see the restorative space requirement for a screw type crown. In a screw retained crown the requirement of restorative space is very less as the crown and the apartment is fabricated as a single piece. The minimum space needed for a screw rated restoration is 3.5 mm. One other thing with the screw rating is that the lab cost is higher with the screw type as it requires an additional custom made abutment fabricated from a castable or UCLA abutment. In short, if the restorative space is 5.5 mm or greater, both cement and screw type is possible. The option is yours. If the space is between 5 to 3.5, then only a screw type restoration is possible. Anything less than 3.5 means that case is not ideal for implant rehabilitation. In such situations, you need to find more vertical space by modifying the occlusal plane if that is feasible, or you need to place the implant more deeper inside the bone to facilitate more restorative space. The next factor is the ability of the prosthesis to retrieve itself if it needs a modification or refabrication. See as the longevity of an implant restoration is more compared to all other forms of replacement, it often needs modification as its surroundings change. One such instance is when you do implants in the aesthetical zone like upper incisors. In the aesthetical zone, 
any changes that is going to take place over time like the changes in the soft tissues or in the shape of the adjacent tooth is going to appreciate by the patient immediately and might request for a modification of the prosthesis for aesthetical reason so in such instance an implant crown that can be easily retrieved is of great help a screw retained crown can be easily retrieved as the screw hole can be assessed easily so a screw retained crown is preferred in the anterior region when you choose a screw retained crown on the anterior teeth the screw assess channel should always be at the singular of the restoration for aesthetical reason otherwise it will be an aesthetic disaster in order to achieve that implant position is crucial so a guided implant surgery is indicated in the aesthetical zone to get the implant position accurate now there are many instances in which a definitive or permanent restoration is delayed at those times a temporary or intermediate crowns mostly made of acrylic is given these intermediate crowns need to be retrieved at a later stage at the time of permanent restoration in those times a screw retained temporary is indicated one such instance is when the implant is only partially integrated and you want to proceed with a restoration for functional or aesthetic needs the best option in such a case is to give an acrylic temporary screw retained crown so that it can be easily retrieved after fully integration of the implant as the acrylic is less rigid compared to ceramic or metal the load onto the partially healed implant will also be reduced another instance is when adjacent teeth are compromised and you might want to use the current implant for future fpd or implant supported overdenture in such instance retrievability of the current restoration is needed in such situation also a screw retained is preferred the next instance is when you anticipate soft tissue augmentation in a case here also a retrievable crown are of great help The commonest reason why a practitioner choose screw retained is because of the fear of screw loosening complication. When screw loosening happens with cement retained, it is a frustration for the restorative dentist to manage. With the screw retained, it is easy to correct. But screw loosening was common when our implants were external hex and was platform matching. The newer internal hex connection and platform switching has reduced the incidence of screw loosening and can be almost completely prevented by torquing the abutment screw in all full mouth cases a screw retained is preferred because it can be easily managed if any complications occur so the summary is this screw retained crown is the restoration of choice when retrievability is the concern for all those situations we discussed under retrievability screw retained is preferred The next factor is aesthetics. In a screw retained crown, the screw access hole is a dampener for aesthetics, especially if it falls on the labial side in anterior restorations. So when aesthetics is of prime concern, a cement type is more suitable. Now the fourth and the final factor is parallelism of implants. This is especially true in multiple adjacent implant cases. where you want to do joint or splinted crowns when two implants are not parallel to each other a screw retained crown will have trouble in accurate fitting of the prosthesis this happens because of casting shrinkage casting shrinkage will cause inaccuracy in single path of insertion here it is worth mentioning that when you join two screw retained crowns both the crown should have a single path of insertion failing this will invite ill fitting prosthesis leading to prosthetic complications the problem is more if the implants are divergent by more than 10 degrees the inference is this when you have two or more implants which are not parallel to each other a cement type with angulated or custom abutment is preferred over a screw retained one other thing which is worth mentioning here is the problem of excess cement associated with cementable crowns as the soft tissue attachment forming the biological width around an implant is weak compared to natural teeth any excess cement can easily penetrate under the gums and can cause inflammation and is difficult to clean 
it is believed that excess cement is the most common cause for periimplantitis. But there are several techniques advocated to manage this problem of excess cement. Lastly, let us look at the advantages and disadvantages of both types. The greatest advantage of cement type is that every dentist is familiar with this process type as it is similar to crown and bridge. It is also aesthetical as there is no screw hole in the crown. Since the cement type is in two piece, any minor errors in impression and angulation of implant can be easily managed. On the other hand, the biggest advantage of screw type is its ability to retrieve in the prosthesis in hard situations. Also, it is a restoration of choice if the restorative space is less than ideal. And also in screw type, there is no cement. Now let us look at the disadvantages of both types. There are more disadvantages to screw type than cement type. Problems with excess cement and the difficulty in retrieving a cementable crown are the two main disadvantages encountered in cement type. In screw type, firstly it is unaesthetic because of the screw hole in the crown and it is also not suitable if the implants are not parallel enough. It is difficult to achieve the passive fit in case of multiple implants. Lastly, the lab cost is higher for screw type. With that, we come to the end of this short video on screw and cement type restorations. I hope we have discussed almost all the factors concerned in the selection of these two types. So it is time to say goodbye. Please do like and subscribe to this channel if you find it interesting. Thanks for watching. Bye.